This is Stripes Table C. And this is our experiment. I'm Maddie Fox. I'm Maddie Busby. And I'm Maddie Nagata. We're the Maddie group. Alright. So, this is our question. Our experiment got a little bit messed up, so the question doesn't connect with the hypothesis that well. Anyways, we're seeing which affects the bacteria levels more, price or flavor. Our hypothesis was that if you compared price and flavor and the change between the, category, between the experimental groups and the control group, then flavor would have the most change. This would be because price, there's no reason for the bacteria levels to change. It's just the bacteria is cheaper for that company. But with flavor, the ingredients change. For example, peach has peach chunks in it. And vanilla has no peach chunks in it. Um, for our expected graphs, on price versus bacteria level, we think that the higher the price, the less bacteria we will find. That's because more expensive yogurt has um, pure sugar, which is really hard for the bacteria to reproduce on, but cheaper yogurt has artificial sugar, which is simple and easy for the bacteria to reproduce on. Okay, this is our flavor expected graph. As you can see, we think that peach is going to have the most colonies. This is because it has chunks of peach in it, which could host its own bacterium. Vanilla has nothing besides vanilla extract, so we thought that would have the least number of colonies. And these are all just averages. And these are averages. For our research paper, we all researched flavor versus bacteria levels price versus bacteria levels. We found that the thing that would affect bacteria levels most was sugar. Um, as Maddie Busby said before, simple sugar is much easier, simple sugar, like artificial sugar, is much easier for bacteria to reproduce on than actual real sugar, which is more complex. So for the procedure, um, we'd start with making our plates. We'd heat the media in a beaker and put it on a hot plate and wait till it appears to be a liquid. And then while you're waiting, you sterilize your environment, wash your hands, and clean the table with antibacterial. You gather the plates, the sharpies, whatever you need, the materials. Um, and when the media turns to liquid, you turn the hot plates off and you take out the media. You pour the media into each plate covering the bottom with a thin layer of liquid, and you have to make sure that the plate doesn't get contaminated because that would ruin how the bacteria grows. And you have to parafilm it, but you have to parafilm it so you can see from the top, so you can see the bacteria and take the pictures for the experiment. Okay, so to prepare the samples for the yogurt, you need test tubes, and you keep the lids on so it doesn't get contaminated. And you fill each tube with yogurt, then, uh, then you add some water to water it down. You securely twist the cap lock so otherwise it won't get contaminated. You shake the cube to mix. And you label the tubes. Place the tubes in a marked bag with the half and half to be refrigerated. For the half and half, take a test tube and carry it to the sink. Carefully pour the half and half into the tube and securely twist the cap on. You need to label it half and half negative control. You place the tubes in the bag with the yogurt to refrigerate it. To inoculate your plates, the first thing you have to do is sterilize the table to make sure nothing contaminates your plates. Take out your materials and lay them all over, uh, lay them in your sterile environment. Take your paraffin off the plates so that you can uh, inoculate them. Lay the plates out on the table with the lid still on. Take each plate and draw four quadrants on the bottom. Make sure it's on the bottom, because if it's on the top, the lid will move. Then label each quadrant with the name of the brand or the flavor. Open one of the test tubes and insert one end of the Q-tip. 
Don't touch the cotton end because you'll contaminate it. You'll need that end later. Swirl the Q-tip around vigorously for 10 seconds to make sure you get plenty of yogurt on your Q-tip. Pass the tube to your second person and have them quickly screw the lid on. Have the third person partially open the lid. Never completely remove the lid to avoid contamination. Swab back and forth in a V around the edge in one quadrant. Using the other side of the Q-tip, put, put, the, put the top of the Q-tip down where you ended the last V. Draw another V without it touching the first V, except at the start. Using a new Q-tip, draw a third V. This V starts at the end of the second V and then fills in the rest of the empty space. Repeat steps 6 through 12 until all plates are fully inoculated. Parafilm the plates. Make sure they are completely covered to avoid melting of media. Write the child number, example, price one, at the end date at the bottom of each plate so you know when the plate will be ready to be counted. Place each plate upside down in the incubator. Then clean up your space. You have to observe the plates every 24 hours and take notes on how they smell, look, and how the size of each colony is. After two days, take out the plates and set them on the table. Draw a circle around the interior ring and um, swab on the third V of the bottom of the plate. Okay. Um, put, uh, you put the plate on a graph paper and we're using the little squares on the graph paper to count the size of the colony instead of using squared centimeters or squared inches. And you have to count um, as many squares that have spots of bacteria on them as a whole square or as most of the square is covered counted as one. If half the square is covered, count it as half. And you have to enter your numbers into the data table. For, ma for the materials, we use petri dishes to put the media in and to grow our bacteria in. The media, of course, to put in the petri dishes. Um, our yogurt, wallaby, yoplait, and clover. Q-tips, sharpies, test tubes, and 409 cleaner. Uh, these are data tables. The first one's for flavor. As you can see, the, um, the first trial for flavor is a little messed up. Um, the range is really big, so that's pretty bad. It means that there's almost no correlation. And then, the same thing for price, there's almost no correlation. Well, there's some, but there's a big outlier for the 17 cent yogurt on trial four, which messed up the averages a little. These are our final graphs. As you can see, on our flavor graph, our numbers were all over the place. On peach, we had one trial that was We had, w we had one trial that was way above the other ones. Thank you. Okay, right, so this is our flavor again, but this is averages only. Surprisingly, it actually turned out to have a trend. But still, there's no, it, still the averages are really unreliable. It just happened to end up that way. Yeah, it just happened to end up that way. And it, that was actually the exact opposite of our hypothesis. So for price versus bacteria level, as you can see, our graph is a little bit crazy. We had tons and tons of outliers, and it does not match our hypothesis at all. In conclusion, we think that most yogurts are created equally, at least the ones that we tested. But it, it sorry, it does match our hypothesis a little bit.